How many people have done a marathon before? Just stick your hand up quickly. Okay, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Your very first marathon, you're standing there at the starting line. The furthest you've ever run is 32. So those last 10 is totally uncharted territory. It was pretty um, dark and gloomy overhead. Anyway, so off we went, nice and slowly, went through the run. And the pick and pay marathon is a double lapper. Now, around about 4Ks, that's when the uh, rain started, gently at first. And then eventually the puddle started to form. So what you do, of course, because you don't want to get your tackies wet, so you jump around the puddle so that your tackies don't get wet. Let me tell you, by the time we reached the 21k mark, we were just splashing through them because we were wet right through to our underpants. This is my first marathon. We get to the point where we have to peel off. And just then, Ronnie and Henry and myself still, still running nicely together. As we peel off, we passed a man that had a 65 on his back. Now in the running fraternity, if you're competing for honours in your age group, you've got to wear your age on your back. So if this guy was 65, it meant that he'd already attained the age of 65. <coughs> I could see someone smiling over there, understanding exactly what I'm talking about. So we sailed past this guy, and I think to myself, this is unbelievable. I mean, a 65-year-old guy running a marathon, wow! Unbel so I sort of nodded my appreciation. Of course, we passed the guy, and off we went. By the time I hit 32, this was the only thing that I understood. We were now getting into uncharted territory. By 35 k's, I was pretty close to death. By the time I reached 38 k's, I must have been dead because my legs were so heavy. It, it, it's an experience which I cannot explain to you unless you've run a marathon and you're prepared for it properly. At the 40 k mark, the only reason I was still going was that Henry and Ronnie were with me and I couldn't let them down. <coughs> At that particular point, the guy with the 65 passed me. But the way he passed me was so effortless, and I just looked at this guy and I thought to myself, you just learned the biggest lesson of your life, don't ever judge anybody. And finally, when we got to the final, that 42.2k mark, I turned around and I looked at Henry, and I said to him, well that was amazing, we made it 19 seconds after our goal time, which was, in, which was 4 hours and 15 minutes. So we planned 4 hours, 15 minutes, we made it in 4 hours, 15 minutes and 19 seconds. And I said to him, well, goal accomplished, but is that really a good time? And he looked at me and he shook his head. And he said, Paul, when are you actually going to get it? He said, it's not about what time it was. You might have done it in three and a half hours or, and you may have done it in five hours. He said, the point quite simply is that for the first time in your life, you've got a marathon in your head. You actually understand what a marathon is. You understand the distance. And it's remarkable that... It's not that it is easier because of the distance, but it becomes easier mentally to do a marathon once you've completed your first one.